Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to Grace Church, our April 5th service. We want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. Just, uh, just before we get started, though, if, if you have any communion, uh, you would like to take communion with us. We're going to take that after worship, so go ahead and get your elements together and get ready. And just uh, let's believe God for a great, great service this morning. I believe hearts are going to be touched by the worship and also by the Word of God. So get everybody ready, get the family together, and let's worship together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us together this morning. As we get into your word, as we worship you, I ask for your anointing and utterance to be given to us this morning. And we thank you for the mighty things you're going to accomplish. And we thank you for the changed lives by your spirit and by your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's worship. I seek you, Lord, I seek you with my all, all on fire. Things that's 
surround become shadows in the light of you. When I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. into your holiness when I gaze into your loveliness when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you when I find the joy of reaching your heart when my will be comes enthroned in your love when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you
Father, we praise you. Jesus, our Savior, Redeemer, our Healer. We were made to worship you. We were made to worship you. Father, we love you this morning, Father God. Father, we just love you, we adore you, we worship you, my Father. It's so good to be in your presence. No matter what's going on around us, we're safe in your presence. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, I will not fear, because you're with me. You're with us, Lord watching over our body watching over our family we worship you oh father we love you this morning you're so good to us you're so good to us father god we don't have to fear yes things are going to happen but we don't have to fear because you're with us and we love you I want you to get your communion elements together. We're going to take communion in just a second here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. At this moment, we're going to go ahead and take communion after a time of worship. It was an awesome time just worshiping the Lord. Just stay in that attitude as you get your element together, your bread. We, we love celebrating, taking communion every Sunday to remind us, whether we're here or in our homes or at work, wherever you may be. Amen. It's good to take communion and remind us of, you know, uh, this is Palm Sunday and next week is going to be Passover. And so this is such a beautiful picture of Passover because the bread represents the lamb. God told Moses, have the people go into their homes. Notice, go into your home. After, you've, after you kill the lamb, apply the blood on the doorposts. Apply the blood on the doorposts. And, uh, and also apply, uh, and go inside. Notice, here's what a lot of people forget. They apply the blood on the doorposts, Right? And that's so that the death angel would not kill the firstborn. But what were they doing while that was happening at night? They went inside and ate the lamb. Amen. They went inside and they partook of the lamb and ate the lamb. So thank God that this bread represents them eating that lamb. And notice the next day when they left, the Bible says there was not one feeble among them not one feeble so that means there nobody was sick after eating the lamb the night before and then they left Egypt no one was sick amen so those are promises that we have as you take communion it's like your protection from viruses protection from sickness protection from disease why because of the lamb so I want you to say this Heavenly Father thank you for the Lamb of God the, the blood that he shed and his body that he gave as I partake of the Lamb, just like the children of Israel did, I believe that divine health is imparted into my body and it kicks out any sickness and disease and keeps away any virus in Jesus' name. Thank you that I'm protected by the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Go ahead, break, partake. Now the blood, in the same manner, remember they have to apply the blood on the doorposts, so that was for de definite divine protection from any, the angel of death touching the firstborn. Amen. So when you're under the blood, it can't touch you. Amen. We have confidence that we're protected by the blood. You might say, why, Pastor? Because the blood pays for all your sins. 
So the enemy has no legal right to put sickness on you because your sins are forgiven. Just like Jesus told the, uh, the man that came down through the roof. Son, your sins are forgiven you. When he needed healing, why would he say that? Because if you know your sins are forgiven, you can receive healing. And so I want you to say this. Father God, thank you so much for the blood of Jesus. It's a proclamation that my sins have been paid for. And so I thank you that I'm forgiven. And I have every right to your protection, to your righteousness, to your freedom that I have in Christ Jesus. Thank you that I'm protected. My family's protected. My church is protected. My job is protected. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go ahead. Right? Go ahead and partake right now. Amen. Say amen if you agree with that. Glory to God. At this time, I'm going to have uh, Pastor Lucy come on up and give us some an announcements and, and so forth. I do want to say before she comes up, we miss you. We miss not seeing you here and, and we love you and, and, uh, and just know that, that you know, you're in our prayers. We love you and we believe soon we will see you again. Amen. Pastor Lucy. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. If this is your first time joining us, we just want to say welcome. And to all our Grace Church uh, family, we want to say hello. We're glad to see you this morning. Glad that you joined us. And um, yes, like as Pastor just stated, we miss you guys. Um, but we know that we'll be joined together soon. And the church isn't the actual building, yes. but it's the you individual that is the church. Um, just one announcement, just to let you know that the church office is closed until April the 30th. And I just have an encouraging word, you know, as I um, ask the Lord, you know, Lord, what should I share with the people uh, to encourage them this morning? And he said in Hebrews, uh, 1, um, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, in the um, easy to read version, it states... Um, it states this. Well, actually, I'm going to read just verses 2 and 3. We must never stop looking to Jesus. So he wants us to look to him. Amen? Amen. Uh, he is the leader of our faith, and he's the one who makes our faith complete. He suffered death on a cross, but he accepted the shame of the cross as if it were nothing because of the joy that he could see waiting for him. And now he is sitting at the right hand of God on his throne. I also want to read it to you in the um, TPT translation. And it says, we, looking, we look away from the natural realm and fasten our gaze onto Jesus, who birthed faith into us and who leads us forward into faith perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing, knowing you would be in, with him. Amen. So he was focused. And so we need to be focused. We need to Amen. keep our eyes on Jesus Amen. and stay focused just as he was because what he knew that he was going to get the prize of having us one day. Amen. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation. And now he sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. And, you know, I just want to encourage you, you know, not only, not only to, to keep looking to Jesus but to seek him during this time for you and your family. You know, it's a perfect opportunity. I mean, I know it's easy just to sit there and watch TV, but, you know, use this as an opportunity to get, you know, hook up to our Grace Life University um, app and, and watch some things there that can encourage you spiritually. Keep reading your word. Keep praying in the spirit. And I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you for you and your family. Amen. Well, we love you and uh, hope we are looking forward to seeing you next week for Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Amen. And you know what? Pastor Lucy brought a great reminder, a, a great reminder about that and about uh, if you have nothing to watch. We have Grace Life Institute, which is a subsidiary of, of Grace Life University, where you can go to gracelifeuniversity.com and sign up and you can watch every one of the first year classes for free for free you can, how can you get that first year courses that we taught here at Grace Life University for free you can do that if you'll go to gracelifeuniversity.com 
And so it's a perfect opportunity to get into the Word. You can, there's different uh, topics you can, you know, awesome messages that we have there. So, so like she said, use this opportunity to get into the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And hey, listen, if you're ready to give this morning, again, thank you so much for your giving. Like there's different ways to give, and, and like, you know, we've stated before, online, smartphone, mail, Sunday, uh, uh, well, of course, you can't come here Sunday, but you can mail it, amen, but, and, and so forth. So different ways that you can give, just however you want to do it, mail a check, whatever works for you. Go ahead and, and uh, just mail it in, and thank you for your faithful giving, amen. Thank you for your faithful giving. We're continuing to, uh, uh, you know, believe God for all the finances to continue to come in. Listen, this is a time, uh, and we understand some of you lost jobs or whatever, you, you, you know, you have, might have less to give. But don't stop your giving of what comes in. Amen. God is your provider. Don't trust your job is not your provider. God is your provider. So keep giving. Be faithful in that. And put God first in that area. And watch him more than bless you beyond what you can imagine. And so be faithful. Give. But also let me just give you a. Um, let's go ahead and show a, a, where, where we are on our new total for the. Well, let me give, why don't you give us the first the, the pictures of the, of the update of the building of the children's wing. Uh, here's now it's starting to notice it's starting to look more defined now you can see the, the that's looking towards the nursery and there's the window that's look, the security window that you'll be able to look into the nursery to watch to see the babies and notice the bathroom now has the has the the floor above it because the AC units are going to go above that and this is the storage room and this is the room to the nursery go ahead and put another picture Okay, this is again looking like to the left as you go into the front door. And this is the kindergarten room. And now you see their window right there. You can see it right there. They have their window to be able to look in there. So it's nicely defined. I'm telling you, this stuff is, we're using 18 gauge steel. This is pretty strong stuff here. Uh, very strong. It's, it's very strong. Uh, I, I do got one good report. Uh, I was speaking with the architect because they were going to make us put in the back here over that window. A 14-inch thick stud that Joyce was going to go across, two of them. And I found out it was going to cost us 600 bucks just for two of those. And so I called, I texted the architect, so listen, there's got to be, this is a lot of money just for two studs. And I, and I suggested to him, why can't we, this is an, this is an outer, it could, be, it could be screwed to those members from the building, and, and it's going to hang by itself. So sure enough, he came back to me and said, Manuel, you're... And, and Bunger Steel okayed it and said, yes, that, that's like a commercial window. You can hang anything to the steel and you don't have to put a header. So praise God, save 600 bucks right there. And not having to put a header there. And, and I, then I said, how about the outer windows? Do we need a header there? Because it's tied to the bill. He said, yes, yes, we don't have to. So praise God. It saved me time, saving us time and money. And so things, and, and I'm excited because, you know what? I got the call from the HVAC guy. He's ready to go the following week. He needs 13000 down. And so, you know, we need to just get the money, keep going. I'll, I'm going to give you a heads up. We're out of that 100, in fact, well, let's show the other pictures first, and I'll show you what the new total. Here's the little restroom for the nursery. And, and you're going to have to still build this top here, but that's the little restroom that the nursery will have your own little restroom there. Go on to the next one. That's a, that's a view when I'm working, and we're working. Look at that. Isn't that a nice view when you're working of the garden? <laughs> right there in the back. Amen. And then... Uh, the guys that are putting the fire sprinkler system have to hook up to our system up here. And then look at the ladder that I had, we, had, we, had, we had purchased years ago so we can reach these lights. They're using it. And look at how high. That's 19 feet. They're going to move it up to 21 to reach up here to con connect the water system to the new building. And so next week they're going to come and run it and finish it all the way across. And it's going to go to the other side. So that way it's going to pop out for the youth building so it'll already be there. They won't have to mess with coming in here. So... We owe, you know, we've already paid them like 4500 and I think we owe them another four grand or something, and they'll be done. Right now, we have the money to take care of the HVAC guy, as far as the, except for the units. The, these guys, we have enough for, to get the electrical started, plumber started, but after that, we're going to start running out of money. So we need you to continue to just be faithful and do, you know, what God leads you to do. Amen? In that area? Now, is that it? Is, you got the new total? Here's the new total. One hundred and sixty-six thousand five hundred and sixty-four dollars and sixty cents. Amen. That's awesome. So it continues to come in. Now again, I don't want to give you the whole total, but right now, out of that, we've got about thirty-some thousand left. 
because we're using it. We're not just leaving it in the bank. We're using it. We're building. But you can see how far we're getting. After we get all the rough stuff in there, we're ready for insulation. We're ready for drywall, the doors, then all the finish work, the windows. We can get the windows and all that stuff in there. Amen? So continue to believe God with us. And let's, let's, let's pray as we give this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for what you're doing and for the opportunity to, to give unto your kingdom. And thank you, Father. Again, we look to you as our provider. Regardless, and Father, I continue to believe with those that have lost jobs that you're going to replace them, that, that their needs will be taken care of, that they will be funded and taken care of, whether it's through unemployment, whatever it is, that, that you're going to meet their needs, Father, until they can get back to work again. And so I just pray that also for some of them, I pray that you'd give them creative ideas of maybe starting another new business. And so I pray that this time will be a, something that the enemy meant for evil. You're going to turn it around for good for our people and that they're going to be blessed and come out prosperous in spite of everything that's going on. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Thank you so much again for your faithful giving. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. Now, again, it's kind of, uh, what, what did I do with my... You have my cell phone? Oh, okay. <laughs> the reason, the reason uh, I have my, my cell phone here is because, again, it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, if I say something good, it's kind of quiet in here, you know, because you guys aren't here, amen? So every once in a while, if I say something good, I might, I might do this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Or if I have a good joke, like I told you, know, I might put one of these sound effects from my, from my uh, app, sound effect app. Amen. So anyway, are you ready for the word? Let's pray. Father, as we get into your word, I ask for the Holy Spirit to give me utterance. And I ask that the Holy Spirit give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying today, right now. I believe it's a right now word from your spirit, Father. And I thank you for touching us like never before this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I'm continuing the teaching of how to prepare for the end times. This is part two. As I was saying last week, Father God wants us prepared for the coming of His Son, amen? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? He loves us so much that He, that he will tell us and give us warning about what's about to happen, amen? Uh, he, he, in other words, he, don't, he doesn't want us to be fearful, he don't want, want us Christians to freak out with the things that are about to happen. Amen? And, and I think this is a wake-up call, what's happening today, to what's going to happen in the future. So I want you to go to the book of Luke. This, I, I believe the Spirit of God was leading me to go to the book of Luke, chapter 21. And let's go there, Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. And this is, Jesus is talking about, you know, the disciples were asking him about end times when the temple was going to be torn down and everything. That temple, Jerusalem temple, was torn down at 70 AD. But Jesus stated some things that were going to happen uh, before, you know, they were going to be persecuted and the temple was going to be torn. Notice what he says in, in uh, uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 5. Then as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said... These things which you see, the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there, what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? Look at verse 8. I want to focus on verse 8. I want to, I want, I want to talk to you about how to prepare for these end times. Notice what Jesus said. He said, Take heed that you not be, what? Deceived. That's the first thing I want, I want you to know, the first point I want to bring across. Don't be deceived. We're living in the end times. Don't be deceived. Why? Notice what Jesus said. Take heed that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near. Therefore, do not go, what? After them. Amen? Do not go after them. Listen. Jesus was warning that before the end comes, there's going to be a lot of false Christs. And that the enemy would try to deceive people. And listen, I looked it up on the internet and of people that claimed to be Christ. And you should see the list. <laughs> from, from Jim Jones to, to all these different people that claimed to be Christ. And, and, you know, that the end was near at that time. And Jesus said, that's going to happen. So we've already seen this already happening. 
That's part of the signs, beginning of the signs before Jesus comes back. And so, I, I don't have time, you can Google it and you'll, you'll find a list of all the false Christ, people who have attempted. Uh, there was a, another guy who said he was not only Christ, but the Antichrist. <laughs> and, uh, and tattooed 666 on him and so forth. Just all kinds of crazy stuff. But you've got to understand that the enemy's number one weapon is deception. Remember, the Bible says Eve was deceived by the enemy in Genesis. In fact, in Revelation 12, 9, let me show you some scriptures of why you've got to be careful with deception because the enemy is the number one deceiver. That's his number one weapon. Notice, in, in Revelation 12, 9, the, the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who what? What's his char main characteristic? He deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Notice, the main characteristic of the enemy is that he's a deceiver. Amen. He's a deceiver. In fact, go to uh, Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Here's a few scriptures I want you to show you. And, and, and this is after the, after the thousand years uh, 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 was, was up and so forth where the devil was cast. Notice, uh, uh, he, after the thousand year millennium, he's cast into the bottomless pit and, 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 he, and the Lord shut him up. I like that. The Lord shut the devil up and set a seal on him so that he should what? There it is again. Notice, what's the main characteristic of what the devil does? That he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. Some people say that there's no devil. Well, listen, if there wasn't any devil, yes, the devil's works have been defeated, but one thing that the devil has that he still operates is deception. Amen? Jesus has defeated him, but he can still deceive but after these things, he must be released for a little while. And, and I don't have time to explain why he's going to be released for a little while. But again, it's because you know why? During the millennium, there's people that's still not going to want Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. Can you imagine that? After a thousand years of peace and prosperity, that shows you that God is a fair and just God. And he gives everybody an opportunity to receive his love and grace. Look, at go down to verse 7 through 10. Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from what? His prison. Now, go to verse 10. Oh, oh, verse 8, yeah, verse 8. And he will go out, there it is again, what's he going to do? Deceive, to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose numbers as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints. Even then, at the thousand years, the enemy is going to try to invade the, the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. But look at verse 10. And the devil, who what? There it is again. Deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire. If the devil's bugging you, remind him of where he's going to end up. At the lake of fire with brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen? So, listen, what did Jesus warn in these last days? Listen, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Listen, two, two areas where, the, if you don't want to be deceived, you need to stay in the Word and follow God's Spirit. Amen? Follow God's Word God, and follow God's Spirit and you will not be deceived. Amen? But let's go back to Luke chapter uh, 21. And I want to start reading from nurse, verses 9 through 11. And I want to get to the main thing that I believe God was showing me about what's about to happen. Let's look at this. Verse 9. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. Here's my second point. Don't be terrified. Because don't be deceived. Or, and the second point is, if you, to be prepared for these end times, don't be afraid. Or in other words, don't be terrified. Like some people are. Notice, when you hear of wars and commotions, don't be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. How many know we've been seeing wars and commotions, right? But the end's not yet. But look at verse 9, uh, 10. Then he said to them, nation will what? Rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We've already seen World War I. We've seen World War III. I believe we're in the cusp of World, I mean World War II, and I believe we're in the cusp of World War III. Amen? Look at verse 11. And here's, here's the main point I want to get to. And there will be great earthquakes in various places. I do believe there's going to be another major earthquake affecting the United States in the near future. But we've already seen earthquakes all over the place. Look at the one that happened in Japan, 2011. I know uh, David Wilkerson gave a prophecy that America was going to experience a great earthquake and that it would happen after some time after it happened in Japan. And so, again, be alert. Be prepared. That's why I told our people, you need to have some basic necessities 
on the side in case a major uh, situation happens. And like what happened right now with this coronavirus. I preached on this in 2014. Listen, but notice, earthquakes in various places, famines, and they're, here's what we're experiencing right now, pestilences. Amen, this situation with the pandemic, with the coronavirus. Pestilences is another sign that we would see. It's not the end yet, but we're, it's signs that his return is near. And what? Pestilences. But then, so we're seeing it right now, right? With, through the coronavirus. Here's the next one. And there will be, here's the thing, and I, and I want to bring this up because people can get scared, but I don't want you to get scared. I'm warning you ahead of time. And there will be what? Fearful sights and great signs from heaven. I believe with all my heart that this is the next thing, whether it's in the near future, in the next few years to come or whatever, that this is the next thing we're going to begin seeing. We're going to be seeing, to, now to us that know, we should not be in fear. But notice, fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Let's look at this in different translations, verse 11, so we can get a little bit of, what does that mean? L can you put it in the uh, CB first? Notice, there will be great earthquakes and wide-scale food shortages and epidemics. Come on, Bible. Be, I mean, people, the Bible is like today's newspaper. There will also be terrifying sights and great signs in the sky. Terrifying sights. Put, put the CV. And great signs in the sky. There will be great earthquakes and many places people will starve to death and suffer. Over the years, haven't we heard of famines happen in Africa and other different places? Yes. All, listen, all sorts of frightening things will be seen where? In the sky. Amen. Now, put it in Amplified. There will be mighty and violent earthquakes, and in various places, famines and pestilences, plagues, malignant and contagious, is that what we're experiencing right now? Or infectious epidemic diseases, which are deadly and devastating. And there will be sights of terror and great signs from heaven. Listen. Jesus said this. When, when you start seeing this, you're going to see why I'm, I'm, I'm sharing what I'm about to share. Look, put it in uh, this TPT. And there will be terrible earthquakes, seismic events of epic proportion, resulting in famines in one place after another. There will be horrible plagues and epidemics, cataclysmic storms on the earth, and astonishing, listen, astonishing signs and cosmic disturbances in the heavens. But before all this happens, then he tells them, you know, you're going to be persecuted, uh, Jerusalem will be destroyed, right? All that, all the stuff that's going to happen before this. And then finally, NLT says, put in the NLT for me, in this last one. There it goes. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. Oh, verse 11. Do you want to take it down to verse 11? There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plagues in many lands and there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. Now, I want you to go to Amos chapter 3, verse 7. I'm going to share with you a vision that I believe a man of God had back, I believe, 2004, but he shared it in 2000, around there, 2004, that... Uh, or Roberts had. And I wanted to explain this before I share this because I believe the Lord brought this vision back to me in remembrance that this is going to be the next thing that's going to happen. Because this was given to Oral Roberts and I want to read you the vision that the Lord or the, the spoke to Oral Roberts. He's already going to be home with the Lord. But when he got this, he felt that this was something he needed to tell the world. Amen? And the church. And But notice though, you might say, we have God's word, but I believe God warns us through prophets ahead of time before something happens. Notice what the Bible says. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. God will speak to God's servants before things happen. Amen? And, and he has been speaking. And I believe this vision was given to all robbers to speak to us, to the church and to the world, that Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Now you might say, but pastor, that's a vision. That's not the word of God. Yeah, but Jesus already gave us the scripture that terrifying signs and miraculous signs would be in heaven. So we got the scripture. But now you have a prophet that the Lord gave a vision backing up the scripture. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not just giving it to you as if it's you know, to try to scare people. So let me read to you what the Lord gave them. It's a little lengthy, but please listen. Here's oral speaking. In the midst of the turmoil, the fear, and the anxiety that's in our nation and in our world, as I was walking and meditating, 
He says, I heard the voice of God. I've heard that voice many times. It's familiar to me. And there's no way that I can fail to understand it. His voice, because I'm familiar with it. And instantly I heard the voice and I heard it and then I saw with my eyes something that I'd never seen. Notice he says, I saw something I'd never seen. Suddenly, listen to what he says. Listen to carefully these words. In the clouds, in the skies, listen, above New York City and the east part of the United States and which hung there for quite some time and then spread out across America without touching the ground. So he saw something in the sky hanging above New York City in the eastern part of the United States without touching the ground. And then God diffused it away from America and sent it out to the nations of the earth. And I saw and I heard. What did I see? I saw something coming down from above. Listen what he said. Smoke and vapor and blood. Or it looked like that to my eyes, to my spiritual eyes. There it was hanging so huge until it almost blotted out the sky. Instantly I thought about 9-11 when the terrorists attacked the Twin Towers and through television all of us in America and, the, and probably the whole world saw those more than a than hundred story high buildings crumble and heard the cry of thousands of people who were being either killed or wounded. I remember the fear that struck my heart and knew that what I was feeling everybody else was feeling and remembered that never in the history of the world and certainly not of America that something of this proportion has struck the human race and was a preview of things similar to it that were going to happen through what we now call terrorists. First, I saw this thing hovering and great changes coming in it to where I couldn't miss it. And then I heard something came into my ears and it reminded me of what a friend of mine had said when the first space capsule was released into the sky. They told me that they made all of them. He, he, he was a newsman in New York City to be, to, be, to be maybe half a mile or more away from the capsule. And he said when that thing lifted off the earth, there was a sound. And the sound itself moved the weeds and the growth. And it said it penetrated my body, he said. As I talked to others, they felt the same thing. He said that sound was so enormous that nothing had ever happened like it in the history of the world. Instantly, I thought of that, Oral says, because the sound was coming into my ears and was penetrating my whole being. Hey, in fact, let me stop there. Do you remember in, in the Old Testament when the Lord appeared to them on the mountain and the mountain shook and they heard a loud sound? <laughs> right? And some people think, you know, those Bible stories, yeah, they're okay, but they're the Old Testament. Listen, I believe God is going to reveal himself in different ways to the people of this world and to the church in these last days. You want drama? You're about to see drama. Glory to God in these end times. So he says, I thought that of that because the sound that was coming into my ears was penetrating my whole being. And then I heard God's voice. He said, I'm making a sign. This is a sign according to the second chapter of Acts where the Apostle Peter upon the giving of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit said, there'll be signs in the skies. Are you listening? He said, this is one of the signs of the end time. Why? Because the world is not ready for the second coming of my son. He said, my church is not ready for the second coming of my son. He said, the Jews with whom I had the covenant for thousands of years, they're not ready for the second coming of my son. He said, the nations of the earth are not ready for the second coming of my son. He said, America has been set aside by a special covenant that I made with many of the people who came to found this nation several hundred years ago. That this was my nation and the gospel was going to go out from it unlike any other nation and there'd be more gospel going out from America. But then, and he said, not only would there be a powerful military presence in the United States unlike any other nation, but it would be the center of the gospel that I was sending out. And he said to me, you remember that I said in my Bible to my disciples 2,000 years ago, go into all the world and teach all nations? And when the teaching has reached the nations, then shall the end come. And then he startled me. He said, 
with all of the widespread force of my church in the world, but particularly in the United States, which is the source of most of the gospel that's being preached in all the world, he said, there's a wasting of my power. There's a failure to grasp the end time. And I'm speaking this, not only to you, but I'm speaking it to other preachers because other preachers are, I know, probably think, well, pastor, you talk too much about end times or whatever. There is a failure of grasping the time we're living in. And the church, they are coming to church on Sunday morning mostly for themselves. And the preachers, for the most part, are not really concerned about the nations of the earth. They're, they'll, they're uh, concerned about the little group that is there. And they sing their songs and they get up and preach. And he said, when 9-11 struck, there was a fear that came into the earth, to the hearts, even of my people of the church and people outside the church. Hey, I remember that. When we, were, when we had just started the church in 2000 and in, 20, in 2011, we had a bunch of people that came to Sunday service. And guess what, though? I did preach on end times. I did tell them, I gave them the vision of Brother Hagen in 1951 that Jesus said he's coming soon. Right? And millions of the following Sunday, or uh, following Sunday or two, rushed to go to church. But the preachers were not prepared. And most of them didn't even preach on it. In other words, and didn't even talk about it being the sign of something that's coming hundred of thousand times bigger. He said, when those planes of the terrorists struck the Twin Towers in New York City and they gradually came tumbling down, it was something bigger than people had ever seen. But it's nothing, listen, in comparison to what's going to happen in the second coming of my son. And so he said, my church was not prepared to deal with that. And people came to church and then nothing much happened and they dropped back and many of them went back to their bars. As I heard Kenneth Copeland say, and there I was with my whole creation that's alive in the earth, not counting all those who have died, millions who have lived and died, all of whom will be resurrected at some time in the future, having to do with the second coming of my son, some to everlasting life, to live forever in their new bodies, and some to everlasting shame and contempt forever lost. And he said, I love people. I created them. I love them by creation. I love them because I sent my only begotten son, he says. And he said, now there's got to be preaching with fire from the belly. There's got to be anointing of the Holy Ghost. My church has to wake up because what I'm revealing, revealing in the sign that every eye is going to see and every ear is going to hear, they'll see this thing. They will not necessarily know what it is, but it's a wake-up call about the second coming of my son. It's not going to come and touch the earth. It's going to be seen. It's going to be heard. And the people are going to become aware of the drama of the end time. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Of the second coming of Christ. When, the, when, when, the sky, when, when he splits the skies and comes back with his bride and takes over the reign of the earth and destroys the Antichrist who will arise at that time. He will destroy the followers of Antichrist and he'll establish his kingdom upon the earth. And he said, I cannot let anybody live and die without knowledge that my son is coming back the second time. Do you remember before Jesus came the first time? There was that prophet that was in the temple that, and, 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 and the prophetess that was in there expecting the return, I mean, expecting the first coming of Jesus. Well, that's what's happening today. Prophets are speaking of now of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Oral says, and then I said, Kenneth, it seems to me that we should tell the world about this vision because I saw it and I heard it and I know that sometime, well, it seems to me it could be very soon that this sign, whatever form it is revealed to you, Maybe you won't see it exactly like I saw it, but you'll see something that's beyond anything you've ever seen. You'll hear something in the innermost part of your being that you've not heard. It'll have to do with the second coming to tell you it's now time to get on your knees. I feel it now coming out of my being. It's now time to go back to church. Now listen, you're, you're watching me. You're, you can't come to church right now. Amen? I bet you church means a lot more to some people now, now that they're not in church. It's time to get back to church. It's time, preacher, teacher, to get up with my Bible and really preach the second coming of Christ and to tell people things aren't going on like they're going on now. Things are not going to continue, people, the way they're going on now. 
There's going to be an end of all this. Why? Jesus is coming. We're so caught up in our world. We're so caught up in our, in our lives. And Jesus is coming soon. There's going to be a wake up. This is, there's going to be a wake up of the whole world. And the terrorists are just the prelude. What we're seeing now from them is not going to stop. There are going to be things happen from them that's beyond what we now see. Now, when he said this, this was 2004, we saw the terrorists, remember, beheading people. So we've seen worse things just like he said would happen. Amen? And, and I'll say more about that in a moment. But Richard and Kenneth, I tell you again, as I've already done a few days ago, that's the vision that God gave me. Then Oral says, I asked God about the church. What was the condition of the church? And what effect should this revelation that he's bringing as a wake-up call have on his church? I'll never forget what he said. And I'll say it very carefully and without trying to offend anybody. He said, there's an emptiness in my church. He said, there's a, a, a weakness, a, a wimpness, like being a wimp. He said, there's a spirit of weakness in the people who are trying to proclaim my gospel. He said, they are not feeling me on the inside of them. They're taking some form of theology and taking that little form and they're following what they've been taught. Amen? I call those sermonettes. And the people are coming and sitting there and crossing their arms and saying, well, I hope I feel better when this service is over. And they get up and they just go home. But he said, that's not very, mu that, that's not very much happening. There's not much, very much happening. He said, there's got to be a wake up because the second coming is going to change everything and change every human being who has lived before and who's alive now. And then he says, finally, we got to preach the word of God about the second coming of Christ as we never have before because we're coming down to the end time to this thing to this thing is going to be wrapped up and God's going to have a new heaven and a new earth and he's going to deliver us from our sicknesses and our sin and our humanity he's going to take death out he's going to bring new life to us well he loves us he's got to he's got to tell us to pay attention and get ready and that means what changing direction really repentance is to change your mind change direction well, Ken Richard, as this vision was coming to a close, as God revealed it to me, and, and as I was first settling over America, and then that it would first settle over America, and then be diffused from America throughout the earth, I asked the Lord about America. I said, God, are you going to destroy America? He said, no, I am not going to destroy the very source of sending my gospel out to the nations of the earth. Oral finally says, there's no question, and I know that millions don't understand that. But anyway, he said, no, I'm not going to destroy America. I'm trying to give a wake-up call to my people in America to change and to get the gospel blazing in their hearts and in their minds so that you can carry out what I said. Carry my gospel and teach all nations so that they will not be lost at the second coming. I believe that Oral Roberts got a vision. Go back to that verse 11 from Luke chapter 21. I believe Oral Roberts got a vision from the Lord of one of the things that we're going to see in the near future. Of what? And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But he said, the Lord showed him, it would be what? To warn the church, wake up the church, warn the people of the world, and warn, notice the three categories. The Jews, the lost, people of the world, and the church. To wake up and let them know Jesus is coming soon. But listen don't, don't, don't doubt me out. I, I want to show you. Let's go to that verse in Acts chapter 2, verse 14. Where we, how many times have we read this? And I don't know how many times last night as I was studying this, God brought it out even greater to me. Look at verse 14. This is the day of Pentecost. They thought they were drunk and whatever, and Peter stands up and starts preaching. And he says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the what? The third hour of the day. Nine o'clock. Verse 16. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Did you know that Joel prophesied the same thing? Uh, uh, what what uh, Peter was quoting Joel. Chapter 2. Let's, look, notice what it says. Verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the what? The last days, says God. What's he going to do? I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters, shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, come on now, your old men shall dream dreams, come on now, 
and on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. But look at verse 19. Here it is. We missed it because notice, I will show wonders in heaven above. We missed this verse. We, you know, when I've read this verse, I always related it to right before Jesus physically comes at the end of the tribulation period. That's how I always related this verse. But we mixed it up because listen, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire. Doesn't that sound exactly like the vision that Oral Roberts had? Now look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great awesome day of the Lord. See, I've, I, I bunch verse 19 with verse 20. Verse 20 is the actual, right before he actually returns physically to the earth. That's when the sun's going to be turned to, to uh, the moon to blood and, and, and the sun to darkness. Back up to verse 19. Verse 19, I believe, is going to be uh, what's going to happen before because Jesus shared it in Luke 21, 11. Watch out for fearful sights in the heavens. So this is, I, I'm serious, I believe I got a word from God. This is going to happen. God gave it to Oral Roberts, but he, I believe he's revealing it to us ministers. This is going to happen before the sun being turned. That's in, during the tribulation. I believe this stuff is going to happen. We will probably see this before the rapture. Now, here's what's interesting. Go to, go to, go to Joel 2.30. I mean, no, no, go to Matthew 24.39. Look at Matthew 24, 39. This is what's happening during the tribulation period. And Jesus is talking about his coming. Matthew 24. No, that's not it. Matthew 24. Um, I think I might have gone. 24. Hold on a second. Make sure I get the right one. 24, 39. I think it's not 39. It's, um, oh, 29. Look at, uh, uh, yes. Immediately after the, the, the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. See, after the tribulation is over, the sun will be what? Darkened. The sun will not, listen, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heavens shall be shaken. Why? Because Jesus is about to physically return. So notice, Matthew talks nothing about what? Fire, vapor of smoke. Or something looking like blood, fire. This verse only says that this is talking about only after the tribulation where the moon is darkened, the sun is darkened, right before Jesus returns. So there's a difference between this verse and, now go to Joel. Joel chapter, notice, Joel does the same thing. Joel chapter 2, verse 30. Here it is. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, listen, pillars of smoke. Pillars of smoke. Now, put it verse 31. Look at verse 31 now. Same, same. The sun, there's, see that's before, this is during the tribulation. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming. Are you seeing that? So there's a distinction between this verse 31 and verse 30 where the signs that you're going to see in the heavens. Now, I want you to put, go back to Acts 2, verse 19. Can you put that in the TPT? For me, A Acts 2, verse 19. Can you put that in the TPT? Listen, notice how the TPT puts it. I will reveal startling signs and wonders in the sky above and mighty miracles on the earth below. Listen, blood and fire and pillars of clouds will appear. Pillars of clouds. So it seems like it's almost like what I just told you about how God revealed himself to Moses on the mountain to the people. Notice a pillar came on the mountain and it shook the mountain. And there was a loud sound. And, it, and it, did it bring fear to the people? Yeah, yeah, Moses, you speak to us. Don't let God. God was trying to reveal himself and bring a reverence and an awesome. I'm going to tell you something. I, you don't, I usually don't speak about the fear of God. But when you start seeing these signs, it will bring not a, a, a reverential fear that God is real. Yeah.
and that God is big and that God is about to reveal himself in the earth. So I'm, I, I, I'm, I believe I'm prophesying, I'm speaking prophetically, it's going to happen. You think the Old Testament times was awesome with all the drama. We're about to enter the drama of the end times when Jesus Christ is about to return and my God is going to uh, reveal signs and wonders and you're going to know, you're going to hear something and feel something and it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring the reverential fear of the Lord, a response respect and an honor for God and I'm going to tell you it's people are going to begin to fall on their knees because it's time why because time is running out God's love is still out there he loves people and he's going to show these signs to wake you up because he doesn't want to see you lost he doesn't want to see you Christian living your own life doing your own thing instead of doing what God told you to do it's time to repent, to change your thinking, to come back to God and the things of God. We're, I believe what we're seeing in this epidemic is just a prelude to these other things we're going to see. Listen, I believe this is a now word, and I believe you need to share this with your friends because that way when it starts happening, they don't freak out. And you'll know. And the, what was my point of my message? Don't be terrified, Jesus said. Because you're going to be seeing things like this. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So before I end, I believe this is going to happen. I, I, I mean, that's amazing. You see that. It's, we're going to see amazing things from the sky, and people will know Jesus is coming soon. It's going to be a, when people see it, they're going to know. They're going to hear something. Man, listen, tell your neighbor, Jesus is coming soon, man. You better get ready like that song. People get ready. Jesus is coming soon. We'll be going home. Amen. Now, I want to end, though, with some scriptures to, to because you shouldn't, this, should, this is exciting. Jesus is coming soon, but I know some of you are in fear. And you shouldn't be in fear, especially if you're a believer. Now, if you're not a believer, yeah, you need Jesus. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a little bit. But I want to end you with some, some of these scriptures. In the midst of all this going on, I believe God has given us this warning so us as Christians will not get into fear when you begin to happen. And you can explain to them from the scriptures, look, it's in the word that this would happen. Oh my God. Isaiah 41.10. In the midst of everything that's going on, I want to share some scriptures to encourage you. Fear not. Don't be deceived was my first point. And don't be terrified or afraid is my second. If you're going to be prepared for these end times, that's why I'm trying to prepare you. Fear not. The Lord says, I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I'm your God. I'm going to strengthen you. Yes, I'm going to help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right, right hand. Psalms 27.1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Amen? I'm not going to fear even all this crazy stuff that's happening. Why? Because I got Jesus. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 2 Timothy 1.7 God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? It's time to start preaching Jesus Christ is coming soon. It's time to get back to church. It's time to, to, to give your life to Jesus. Listen, a few more scriptures. Uh, John 14, 27, in the midst of everything that's going, Bible says, peace. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. When the whole world's going crazy, you can have peace. My peace, Jesus said, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And finally, Romans chapter 8, verse 36 through 39. I love what Paul says. Hey, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things that are happening, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither what? Death, no matter people dying, nor life, nor what? Nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Listen, nor things present, nor this coronavirus, or anything else that's coming in the future, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. It's time to stop playing church. It's, it's time to stop playing, just coming to church, just doing the thing that, okay, I did my service for the day, and then I'm just going to go live my own life and act like if nothing's happening. His return is near. So if, if you're watching me and you don't know Jesus, I want to lead you in a prayer. It's time, man. I just sense an urgency. It's time to get right with God. It's time to believe in the good news of God's love and grace for you. So if that's you, I want to pray for you right now. I want you to say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe 
the word that I just heard. That Jesus is coming. And I do believe your word is truth. I have sinned. I'm a sinner. And I repent. I change my thinking. I put my faith in you. Jesus, I believe you died on that cross for all my sins, past, present, and future. And that you were buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. I receive now your gift of grace and righteousness, your forgiveness. Be my Lord, be my Savior, and burn within me your will, your purpose, your plan, and by your grace, I will serve you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, please contact us. We have a phone number. You can contact me directly or at our email. Let us know if you've made Jesus your Savior. We would like to get some information out to you, a booklet to you, and, and just guide you in some things to, to get established in God's love. In fact, you can, you can sign up to Grace Life Institute at gracelifeuniversity.com and you can start taking courses right there to, to build up and grow in the things of God. Amen? But now I want to pray for anybody here too before we leave. I want to pray for, for anybody that's sick. Right now I come in the name of Jesus against any sickness that may be attacking any coronavirus that's attacking anybody that's hearing my voice. I rebuke you coronavirus. I curse you and command you to leave those people in the name of Jesus. And Father, I also pray for President Trump and our leaders and our governors and everyone who's uh, uh, helping us and all the doctors and the nurses that are helping people that are hurting and are sick. And I speak your grace over them, your wisdom over them. We speak your strength over them. Guide them. And Father, thank you for delivering us from this, from this uh, uh, coronavirus in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And Father, I speak blessing over Grace Church members that they're blessed going in and going out. Thank you that they're blessed in their jobs. Take care of every one of them. Thank you that your angels are watching over them, that they have favor and blessings everywhere they go. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.